Level 80, for Thavnir Bound. Thangrid is eager to set forth for Thavnir. I have Kral's instructions in hand. If you are ready to set out, then so are we. Having been to Thavnir before, I can travel by Aetherite, but what of the rest of you? Another sea voyage would waste time we do not have. Kral was of the same mind and has already secured the aid of a good folk of the confluence. We'll take ourselves there. Confluence, thou sayest. I'm afraid so, my friend. Thou wilt recall the hunt for Iceheart, unto whose sanctuary we delivered thee, owing to the knowledge of our comrade Moonbrita. Moonbrita was an authority on etherology, a field of study she did embark upon in pursuit of her parents' example. Both are authorities in their own right, and both are researchers at the Confluence. Haven't you gone to see them yet? I attempted to do so earlier, but to my shame, my courage failed me at the last. As it hath the many times I thought to reach out to them after sending that fateful letter. Neither time nor introspection have revealed unto me the words I should speak, and thus I have kept my silence. Whether you come with us or no is your choice and yours alone. If it is too difficult, we'll manage. Thou art kind to say so, but I have no intention of forsaking our cause. I shall go to the confluence, and I shall face that which hath long been overdue. If it's settled, then let us be off. When we arrive, we should look for a researcher named Kite. Kite or Kitty? I guess we'll see when we get there if they look more like a kite or a kitty. Oh, well, this is like real close. We'll just go to the main A, the right. Well now, this is a rather a lot of stern faces. Are my library books overdue again? Not to our knowledge, we're associates of Kryal of the students of Baldesia. We seek passage to Thavnir and understand that you can assist us. Ah, the test subjects. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> test subjects? Oh, you hadn't heard? Well then, allow me to explain. So in order to travel to an Aetherite, you ordinarily need to be attuned to it beforehand. Otherwise, you can't use it as a beacon to seek out while you're a mess of ether hurtling along the life stream. An inconvenient but incontrovertible limitation of Aetherite teleportation. But what if I were to tell you that there's a way to travel to an Aetherite without being attuned to it? A way to teleport instantly to places you've never been. For long years, we've labored to make such travel possible that people might move about more freely. We've finally done it. We've created a new kind of etherite that doesn't require attunement. Truly, really, that changes everything. Well, my language may have been a bit misleading. The user need not attune to these etherites, but the etherites themselves must have been pre-attuned to each other, thereby facilitating travel between the two points. But it just so happens that of our first test pair of etherites, one has been installed here in Charlie and the other over in Yedlamad, a port town in Thavnair. As you may know, our nation has long maintained strong ties with Razatzan, and indeed we owe much of this breakthrough to the contributions of their alchemists. So to sum up, we're to test these etherites. How fortuitous for you. I should mention that an accident has impaired my ability to channel ether. Will this be a problem? Not at all. As a matter of fact, you might say these etherites were made for people like your good self. Magics imbued within will whisk you away without any effort on your part. Veritable dream come true, and far be it for me to worry about such things, but do we have the permission to make use of your shiny new invention? The only permission required is yours, so assuming you're willing, we're all set. 
may come as a surprise, but we actually struggle to find test subjects. Most people seem to have an unreasonable fear of their souls gradually disintegrating as they drift helplessly in the life stream. In the statistically unlikely event that something goes awry. But it's plain that you aren't most people. Hey, hey, Mistress Kryle truly knows how to pick them. Definitely not a kitty. That might change the subject. Are Master Wilson and Mistress Blueweeda not present today? Oh, you didn't hear? They've recently resigned their post. Their expertise was needed elsewhere. Large-scale project helmed by the forum itself, as I understand, but I'm not privy to the details. I see. Any other questions? No? Then let's get going before you change your minds. Please see to your preparations and head outside to the Etherite Plaza. I'll be along shortly. The four of you, was it? Three. I'm already attuned to the crystal in Thavnir. You are? Oh. I would have preferred more test subjects. <laughs> oh, well, never mind. If our three travelers could line up here, please. You do play the guinea pig a lot. Take a deep breath, and I'll soon have you soaring through the ether. Oh, and one last thing. <laughs> you might experience a teensy-weensy touch of violent ethereal sickness. Good luck! Oh, great. What? That's where we're going. Okay. Thavnir, home to city-state Rads at Han. Rising from the southeast waters of the Bounty, this Isle of Plenty served as the battleground for a conflict between two peoples. Their cultures bled into one another until a unique amalgamation was distilled from the chaos in a process not unlike their precious alchemy. Once solidified as a single nation, an adamant stance of neutrality would hold invaders at bay. For a time. Now across this vibrant isle creeps a fog of malice. What choice do you have? <laughs> what chance? against such an insidious foe.
Who's the bar? Dabner. Seen fairer faces after a bout of bad shellfish. <laughs> Let me bring you something to drink. That should help settle your bellies. There was a note with Kryle's instruction. Don't let Estinian roam the markets alone. He's alarmingly bad with coin. Manage to will yourself to your feet, but given your condition, will you be able to reach Astinian in time? Is there a timer? I don't see a timer. Where could he have gone? He in one of the buildings? Can we go in the buildings? There he is. Ether sickness. This gives you heavy. You there, I need three drinks, something that helps with ether sickness. But by the Manusia Traveler, er, I mean greetings, greetings and welcome. You're wise, good sir, to come to me. My special Amra Lassi made with only the finest and freshest ingredients is famed for calming unruly bellies. By the way of a warm welcome to Thavnair, I'm pleased to offer it to you for the low, low price of 19,800 gil. For not one, not two, but three bottles, a bargain amongst bargains. Hmm. Price is high road, high road robbery, and you want to say as much to Estinian, but you realize any words of warning you cry out would be accompanied by your last meal. You must stand before Estinian using gestures. Deny that the deal is fair. 19,800 gil. That's a reasonable deal, isn't it? Hmm, I thought you could barely stand. What do you need to tell me that's so urgent? Wait, I shouldn't buy the lassie? This merchant is swindling me? Wah! Well, zero apologies, sir, but I appear to have my prices confused. It's actually 1,890 gil for the three bottles of lassie. Hmm, that confusion would have been quite costly for both of us. Very well, then, your coin. Here, a bottle for each of you. Take them to the others and get some rest. I'll be back after I've explored the town. Praise be to the twelve. My stomach doth loosen its death grip. My heart felt thanks to thee and Astinian and to the fine fruits of this land. 
You were in time? Excellent. You've spared us Tataru's wrath. Sweet, sweet release. If you haven't already, you should have yours too. Right, I'm ready to get on with it. That last he truly worked wonders. Back on your feet, I see. Th thy hair. Aye, I've bound it. Tis the most I could do against this heat and short of shedding my armor. May I ask where you got the cord for it? A local vendor, the man said it's a Thavnarian weave, tough and not easily unraveled. How much did it cost? 9400 gil, a steal, I was told. Tis nothing fancy, but I've always valued function over form. That's incredible. I dare say not even Alphanol could hold a candle to you. It's not uncommon for merchants to set their prices high, but doesn't it seem excessive here? Are all Hanish merchants so unscrupulous? Expected the Azure Dragoon to put up more of a fight. One mustn't be too quick to paint a diverse people with a single brush. If such doth prove to be commonplace, I would presume it's symptomatic of societal instability. Claiming Thavnir as its dominion, the nation of Razatan hath long thrived as a hub of commerce. In the beginning, there were the Arkasodara, a Matanga tribe indigenous to this island. Over time, they came to be joined by other races, and through their intermingling, a culture rich and distinct did emerge. From alchemy to textiles, the products of Hanish culture have come to be celebrated and coveted the world over. Development only aided by the nation's prime location as a waypoint betwixt east and west. All of this hath combined to make a trading power of Radatan, yet such a status cannot be taken for granted. Nay, it must needs be maintained through judicious governance and stringent regulation. Neither of which I see any evidence, given that merchants at a gateway town are free to fleece hapless travelers and tarnish the reputation of the nation at large. Just so, that opportunistic pricing is rampant doth suggest that oversight is much weakened, or mayhap that the people have fallen upon hard times. Whatever the truth may be, it would be prudent to ascertain the current state of affairs. Prudent and practical, aye, we've naught to lose by learning more. So ere we seek out Kral's acquaintance, shall we see what information we can gather here in Yedlamad? Excellent, we didn't exactly get off to a flying star, but we'll make up for it. Level 80 for Thabner Bound. Complete. Level 80 on low tide. His stomach behaving once more, Thancred is ready to get to work. All right, let us split up and make inquiries in town. Zilly, the pier is yours. Once we have learned what we can, we regroup by the etherite, off-putting though the mere sight of it may be. is laden with fruits, but they are on the verge of spoiling, as if they have been left too long. Gazing out from the pier, you spy boats moored off nearby isles, with silhouettes of larger seafaring vessels farther away. Compared to other ports you have visited in the past, there appears to be very little activity.
What am I doing? Oh, recording my sales? Still do it daily out of habit, though I don't know why I bother. Hardly sell anything these days. Business has never been this terrible, but I suppose things could be even worse. I could have a consortium to deal to keep afloat, like Kazal. Don't envy his position. Better to be alone with my little operation, I've come to realize. For a traveler, by the looks of you, if you have a moment, perhaps you could play pay Kazal a visit. He'd be glad for tidings from abroad. Like as not, you'll find him at the Saltwind Sails, a harbor guild building across the water from here. Missing one. That's three or four. Oh, there we go. Well, now, if it isn't a traveler, you're a rare sight in these unsettled times. People have been giving us a wide berth since that accursed tower suddenly appeared in Naranar. If it just stood there and loomed ominously, perhaps things would be fine after a fashion, but no, it had to spawn fell fiends as well. We still have our lives thanks to the Radiant Host, but business is as good as dead. What'll become of us? Only the gods know. Oh, we can use a mount. This must be our secondary city. I mean, it looks like way too big of an area. Must be another one. Calls all. The Dalmascans aren't coming, but we already have everything they ordered. What are we supposed to do with it? I don't know, but yelling at me isn't going to help. All I know is that their plans have changed, and that's that. Look, you must have known this might happen. The Empire is at war with itself, and the provinces are in chaos. Then there's the tower sitting on our doorstep, spitting out monstrosities. The city has its defenses, but we've been afforded no protection out here. We can't blame foreigners for not wanting to take the risk. God, but this would be an enormous loss. All right, all right. Forget about Damascus. Surely some ships are still coming. We have fresh produce, handicrafts, medicines, all the perennial Hanish favorites. The consortium works closely with merchants and artisans to supply only the finest wares. Quality is guaranteed. I know all these things, gals, all I do. Which is why I regret to say I have nothing for you. All voyages have been canceled or indefinitely postponed. You are? Wait, you're a foreigner, are you not? A merchant? Please tell me you're a merchant. I see, that's a shame. Sorry, but we are discussing important matters. If you need something, please talk to one of the others. Um, excuse me. My name is Machia, and I'm here to see Kalzal. Oh, it seems he's busy. I'll come back later, then. Yes, can I help you? I remember seeing you back in the guild. You wanted to speak with Gazal too, did you? I'm Matsya, a fisherman of Akiali, a nearby village. I sell my cash to Gazal, who offers it to foreign merchants, but he hasn't bought anything for a while now. When I heard that the consortium had been struggling, I became worried and decided to come and see him. Just as soon as he's free, anyway, he's a hardworking man and I dare not disturb him. Level 80 on low tide, complete. Level 80, a fisherman's friend. Matsya regards you nervously. Um, if I may ask, what is it that you do? Adventurer, you say, and you travel the world helping people? Then that must mean you're great at dealing with strangers. Please, won't you teach me to be like you? You see, I brought some fresh fish with me, the portion I couldn't preserve, and want to sell them. 
Problem is, I'm terrible with people. I've only ever dealt with Galzal, and I can't talk to customers without getting my trunk in a twist. So please, as silly as it might sound, will you not peddle the fish in my stead and show me how it's done? If you're willing, please let me know and we can begin at once. The events to follow cannot be skipped. You may wish to cancel any pending duty finder registration. You'll do it then. Show me how to deal with customers. I am in your debt. All right, please try peddling my fish to, shall we say, three people here in Yedemod. I will observe you and learn. Matsya is now is accompanying you. Keep him at your side in order to proceed with quest objectives. You can leave Matsya behind by entering a different area or by speaking with him and selecting the option to part ways. You wish that Matsya join you again. Return and speak with him at the original location. Mirana. Hmm, yes. Fish, fish, I got fish here. Fresh fish straight from the sea's bosom to your mouth. Greetings, friend. How fare you of late? Greetings to you, too. I suppose I'm well enough to, given the circumstance. Things have settled down somewhat, but I, it was utter chaos when that tower first appeared, everyone grabbing whatever they could, trampling over each other to get to the city. Many remain there for now, but I could not stay away, had to come back, continue with my life such as it is. Whether or not it was the right choice, only time will tell. Too risky out here, maybe you ought to move to the city too. There's no place like home, but don't do anything dangerous, eh? Oh, trust me, I don't. I make sure to keep well clear of the tower, and when more monsters emerge from it, I heed the Radiant Host instructions. Hope they deal with it soon so we can get back to our normal lives, to the days when you could earn as much as you gave and tuck into a meal satisfied that you did good work. Speaking of meals, why not have some fresh fish today? Those days will come again before you know it. Till then, stay safe. Hmm, fresh fish, you say? Oh, you're a fishmonger. Eh, when you bait me like that, how can I not bite? Very well, give me some of your fish. Thank you for your custom. The catch of the day is shallow as cod. Delectable stewed in coconut milk or baked with a sprinkle of salt. You succeed in making a sale. Is there a way to fail it? Elephant man. Not free. A hawker, are you? Do you sell fruit by chance? If so, I want to buy some Amra. Let's say a dozen. They don't need to be export quality. Amra Shmamra, my fresh fish is the only thing you need. What do you need so many Amra for? Why, for eating, of course. It may seem like a lot, but of late I go through that much in no time at all. I am a stock taker by trade, but with no vessels coming these days, the wares are beginning to pile up. The same token, nothing is coming in from overseas, but not a day goes by that someone doesn't come asking when the next shipment is arriving for this and that and this and that. All of it wears me down, and I find myself feeling constantly hungry. Are you sure you're actually hungry? I know how you feel. Thank you, a pity you don't sell fruit, but I enjoyed our little chat and took my mind off my troubles for a moment. Conversation ends without a sale. I guess you can fail. Never mind, if nothing else, you left there with a positive impression. Let's move on to the north side of town, shall we? Do I not get a chance to do it again? What if I started it over? Did I decide to start it over? Let's see if you can even fail it. I mean, if you can pass it. No 
Okay, it doesn't seem to affect anything, so I'm not gonna bother. How do we get up here? What is it? If you don't mind, I'm rather busy. Oh, God, it's my stomach, huh? Either sickness. No, no, nothing so unusual. In my hurry to get back to work, I just ate a little too quickly. Fresh fish will settle your stomach, and mine are the freshest of all. Oh, food is the last thing I need right now. Go and sell your fish to someone else. Make a sale. Never mind, we just approached him at a bad time, and timing is everything, yes? Thank you so much for your demonstration. It was truly an eye-opening experience. Come, let us return to the pier. Well, the quest line says it doesn't seem to affect anything, so I don't really care. Thank you so much for showing me how to talk to customers. You managed to sell to one of the three people you approached. It was difficult, but when you put your mind to it, you succeeded. Now, you did fail, too, but there are lessons to be learned in both success and failure. By applying yours, I'll endeavor to become a better peddler. Still, there's only so much I can do alone. I hope that things will return to normal for calls all soon. Thought I heard a familiar voice, and who should it be but Matsya? Kazan, have you finished your business at the guild? So you were there too. Forgive me, try as I might, I can't find any buyers. No ships coming in and hardly any going out. There simply aren't any options at this rate. You can't buy my fish anymore. I'm sorry, Matsya, I truly am, but for now, you must peddle your own goods. But by myself, I can't. I want to help you, I do, but as it stands, I can barely help myself. Poured my all into the consortium, and I'll be damned if I let it fall apart. I have friends and families depending on me, and I can't, I won't fail them. My sisters as my witness. The sisters. Also, not to worry, using what I've learned from you, I'm sure I'll manage somehow. Well, I had best return to my village. My thanks again, and please take care on the road. I see you've been busy. Managed to learn a tidbit or two, I trust. I see. We also heard that the tower is affecting many locals' livelihoods, but to think that it would be to such an extent. Another notable, if not wholly unexpected, discovery. Disappearances and kidnappings are disturbingly commonplace. As before, the culprits are almost certainly tempered Imperial soldiers. As before, they mean to use the faith of their hapless thralls to call forth a lunar primal, business as usual for the Talakaroi. The way a fisherman's friend, complete. Level 80, House of Divinity. Judging by his furrowed brow, something important has occurred to Astinian. 
That Matsya fellow you were helping, he's Arkasadara, is he not? Apparently it is almost exclusively his people that are being kidnapped. Should he be traveling alone? Summoning is this perpetrator's aim. Adults stand to reason that Arkasadara would be their primary targets. It is the faith of their ancestors which prevaileth in this land, and many are devout adherents still. Better go after him. Machiali lies to the west, as I recall. The same direction as Kral's acquaintance, incidentally. Settle then. Keep your eyes peeled while we make for the village. See how far we head. Not that far. Turtles. Do not see Matsya nearby, but the elevated ground up ahead may provide a better vantage point. Go up here. Follow the road. Looks like it's up the hill. Do not see Matsya from here either. No, leave me alone. Help, somebody, help. Matsya's voice, and it came from the north. Huh? Where did they go? Why are you here? I see you found him in time. I see our new Soraban. You and your friends came to look for me? I don't know how to thank you. On my way home, I took a moment to stop and rest, think about what to do about, well, everything. Then those men came. Kidnappers. We'd heard that the Arkasadora were being targeted. Surely you have as well. Perhaps it's best if you took refuge in the city. You've considered it, me and the others, but fishing is all we know, the ocean all we have. I see that's your decision to make, but you should take care not to travel alone. Question, if I may. It is our understanding that strange fiends have emerged from the tower. What canst thou tell us of these beings? How much I'm afraid I have no idea what they are. I've heard that some bear an unsetting re resemblance to our divinities. Hmm. For that reason, some have taken to calling the Tower Zot. House of Divinities in the old tongue, it means. Tower of Zot, that's an FF4 reference. They're not true divinities, they're monstrous imitations that bring only death. To have one's faith so twisted is a grievous indignity, and full justified art thou in thine outrage. Know that tis for no other purpose but to neutralize the tower that we have journeyed to this land. In time we may be forced to contend with these false gods, and thus we would learn all we may about them. Wilt thou not tell us of thy divinities and their true nature? You've come all this way to save us? Really? To think I had you peddling fish? Yeah, no doubt. To answer your question, yes, of course, we would gladly tell you about our god. We, I say, because I'm a terrible storyteller and I ask my fellow villagers to do it. 
So please come to our village. We're good, God's fearing folk, all of us, and we'd be honored to share our knowledge and fish. What say us out? Shall we pay a visit to Akiali? Wonderful. I just follow the road west and down the hill. You can't miss it. So tis the simulacra of Thavnarian gods that are being summoned. If any doubt existed before, there can be none now. They kidnap Hanish or imprisoned in the tower. Pray that we will be able to save them. Though indeed, saving them will mean confronting their false gods, like as not. I, as you said, we do well to study their religious traditions to Akyali. Yali. Elephant. They don't look friendly. Welcome to Akiali, my friend. The name means White Beach, and there isn't much here to save that, but please make yourself at home. Your companions have already begun talking to everyone. Feel free to show yourself around and do the same. Any one of us can tell you about our gods, but you could do worse than to start with Kanga and Old Hasvayada. They're free at the moment, as it happens. Hmm, you wish to know about our gods? What a curious visitor you are. Most want fish. In any case, I'm happy to oblige. Now, I don't know how it is when you hail, but our isle is home to many gods. They can be divided into two groups. The Manusia, beings of wisdom who assume the form of men, and the Mrgra, beings of might who assume the form of beast. Together they are divinities, their forms and personalities many and varied. Some are kind and gentle, others stern and temperamental, just like we mortals can be. All are possessed of great insight and inexperience, and by... Hey, Heeding their teachings, we strive to be better people and live better lives. Interested in learning about our gods, you say? Heh, well, that's what I like to hear. Prick up your ears, then, and listen. In ancient times, the Minusia and the Muga deities, who looked like men and beasts, respectively, were locked in conflict. Eventually seeking the wisdom of Minutia, the Mirga cast aside their own heads and took up those of their foes. Likewise, the Minutia coveted the might of the Mirga, and so they too resolved to trade heads. Thus were born new gods possessed of both might and wisdom. They ushered in the age of harmony between the two factions. And then on as a sign of their esteem for one another, the Minutia have worn animal faces and the Mirga the limbs of men. Okay. There you are. Learned a thing or two about our gods, I trust. While you were off talking to the others, I remembered something that may be of interest. You could let your friends know. I'll go and fetch it from my home at once. Apologies for the wait. I wish to show you this hanging scroll, which depicts three of our most revered deities. By all means, we should like to see it. There are Minutia. You heard about them already. Yes, three sisters. Center one is the eldest. Cinderuva, goddess of wisdom. For this alchemist told her in high... Hold her in the highest. 
To her right is the middle sister, Sandaruva, it's goddess of wealth. She counts many traders among her followers. On the left is Mindaruva, the youngest sibling. She presides over the crafts and so is beloved by weavers. Though each is worshipped for different reasons, the sisters are usually portrayed together in these works, which people keep in their homes for good fortune. Like fashion in a minutia, the deities of Eorzea preside over myriad aspects of life. And what of the Murga, if I may ask? Murga hold power over nature. In ages past, they were revered as guardian deities in times of conflict. If you have occasion to visit our temples and ruins, you'll find their images there. Among them is a god who possesses Agaja's head, and he is venerated as the progenitor of the Arkasadara. Arca then there are dragons. They occupy a special place in our history. You worship dragons, too? It's said that an ancestor of the Satrap, that's the ruler of Razat Fan, forged a covenant with the dragon divinity in ancient times. This divinity has since acted as the guardian deity of the Satrap. Legend holds that if ever the Satrap is in need, his dragon ally will fly to his aid. Dragon ally. You claim to be a terrible storyteller, but nothing could be further from the truth. The passion you bear for your faith is plain to hear. I am confident that the information you've given us will serve us well in our efforts to deal with the tower. It's very kind of you to say. Thank you. I will pray for your success. Right. I believe it's time we sought out Kryle's acquaintance. An alchemist by the name of Nidana. According to Kryle's notes, we're to find her at a place called the Great Work, further north along the coast. Level 80, House of Divinities. Complete. Level 80, the great work. Matsya has a shine in his eyes that wasn't there before. Did you say you're going to see Nidana? Oh, how I envy you. Brilliant and beautiful, kind and understanding. And did I say she's beautiful? I could stare at her dainty eyes and adorable trunk all day. And those eyes, when you meet her, take care you don't drown in them. Someone's in love. Matter going to like the next teeth are right. We could use a writing map a little faster. Lights. That's not good. Their dress marks them as alchemists. I see no evidence of injury or poison. Thinkest thou they but slumber? <laughs> I believe so. Whether it is by choice is another question entirely. Oh, we have guests. You must excuse the poor welcome. Long days and longer nights have taken their toll, as you can see. Ah. 
I am Bashan, servant to the Satrap. My task was, in fact, to wake these good men and women, if you will allow. People of the great world, I come bearing new scales. Mm. Scales? We have new scales? <laughs> yes, my friends. Gather round. I have them right here. Now I can continue my experiment. Many thanks. <laughs> One for me. Those are dragon scales. Mm-hmm. Yes, such materials are vital to their most pressing research. And we are fortunate to have them. Our experiments are so close to bearing fruit. Soon we will have a talisman capable of nullifying the etheric emissions from that accursed tower. That can be useful. Did I say something wrong? Are you not here with Barshan? Wait, who are you people? <laughs> of course, you're the one Cryo sent. The warrior of light we've been waiting for. This is a day of celebration. Praise be to Cinderova. The winds have shifted. I feel it. The end to our toil is near. I feel it too. My head hasn't been this clear in days. Tell me, how did you acquire those scales? Curious that it concerns you so. But worry not. They were freely given by the dragon with whom our satrap has forged a lawful pact. That is well. You must be quite familiar with Dragon King, yes? <laughs> Is this their congealed blood I see on your weapon? Hmm. Speaking of dragon blood, you yourself have been infused with it, have you not? I should like to draw a file or two, if so. <laughs> Experiment on him. Now, see here. Come along, come along. I must insist that you visit our laboratory. Ready to see him unnerved. Your shoving, or so help me. Oh dear, your poor companion. What with the new scales and your timely arrival, my colleagues are a little giddy with excitement. No harm will come to him, I promise. Meanwhile, shall we find a quiet place to talk? As you may have guessed, I am Nizana. The alchemist who sent the request to your mistress, Cryo. We have workshops across the nation collaborating on this research project. But it is here, at the great work, where I collate our results. Come with me, all of you, and I can explain the crux of the situation. Tune while we're here. Right, Madonna.
Allow me to thank you for answering our call. Many towers have appeared around the world, and we are grateful that you would assist us with ours. The Prowl herself is tied up with another investigation. Zuli is an eminently capable substitute, and we will spare no effort to aid you. So if I understand correctly, you seek to make talismans that can nullify etheric emissions. Indeed we do. As you know, the tower emits vast concentrations of ether. One cannot go anywhere near it without being tempered. As such, we can only study the tower from afar and are powerless to deal with it in any consequential way. In order to strike back, the satrap bade us alchemists create enchanted talismans, talismans that will allow us so our soldiers to venture into the tower, even should they lack innate protection. Could such a thing be possible? Admittedly, we are still in the midst of testing, but we are quite confident. Even prior to this, our people have long pursued countermeasures against the etheric corruption of primals. For the methods tested to date, those utilizing dragon scales prove the most promising. Owing to their etheric density, the scales are highly resistant to disrupted forces. The mightier the dragon, the greater the resistance. We seek to amplify this protective property through our alchemy. Thanks to the scales provided by His Excellency, we have been able to make steady progress with the talisman. Soon we'll be ready to conduct a field test, and here is where you and your blessing of light come in. Whatever it is, just leave it to me. What exactly is, is it that you needed me to do? Better than having my blood drawn, I suppose. Aha, aha, perhaps so. And knowing my colleagues, they won't be satisfied with blood alone. As for your task, we ask only that you serve as an escort. We'll explain in greater detail later, but we, but you will be venturing into the tower's field of influence. And so, for your own safety, I would first test how well your blessing shields you, with your permission, of course. In that case, Urianjay and I will find other ways to make ourselves useful. Seeing as you all work to the point of collapse, I suspect you could do with more hands. We would be grateful for any assistance you can provide. If you are ready, then let us put your blessing to the proof. If you exit the great work and turn south, there will be a hill to the right. I will meet you at the top after seeing this in preparation. Hope you didn't have trouble finding this place or climbing the hill. Not all are accustomed to the physical strain. Give you the fruit of our sweat, tears, and many a sleepless night. The drunken Deepa. The Deepa is a lantern presented to the gods as an offering. Taking inspiration from the tradition, we created this device to test the talisman's efficacy. Upon activation, it will move to a certain move a certain distance before emitting a powerful blast of ether. In lieu of corruption, those lacking sufficient protection will experience severe ether sickness. For your test, you will be exposed four times. That should be enough to ascertain your blessing's protective capability. Please begin whenever you're ready. I shall be observing from a safe distance. Commencing etheric exposure testing. Repeat. Commencing etheric exposure testing. Retreat to a safe distance if you are not the subject. Follow the drunken Deepa's lead and try not to fall behind. Reading Ether, please stand back. Let's talk to it. Have to get further away.
You're struck by a powerful blast of ether, but suffer no ill effects. Subject has no irrepressible urge to empty their stomach. Confirmed. Resuming test. Please follow. You are struck by another powerful blast of ether, but suffer no ill effects. Subject stomach and bowel integrity holding. Confirmed. Resuming test. Please follow. struck by yet another powerful blast of ether but suffer no low effects the blessing of light appears to be keeping you safe from harm subject 42 rated impressive no irregularities confirmed resuming test please follow and brace for final discharge follow the light You were struck by the strongest blast of ether yet, but survived completely unscathed. Etheric exposure testing concluded. Please collect and deliver me to the supervising alchemist. Congratulations on retaining your composure and your humors. Here's your damn lamp. Ah, oh, you've returned and not on your knees. A promising sign, but come, let me take the depot off your hands. Thank you, I shall replenish its ether for when we test the talisman. So, no dizziness or nausea or anything of the sort? You're feeling perfectly fine? And the strength of your blessing is beyond doubt. There is no risk that the tower will corrupt your ether. With this, we can request your aid for the task ahead with easy hearts. Level 80, the great work complete. 